done quite a bit of research on this topic over the last few years, and I've come to the conclusion that there's really two main schools of thought here. First being those that believe Instagram changed landscape photography in a positive way. And then there's those that believe Instagram changed landscape photography in a negative way. But one thing we can all agree on is that Instagram has certainly changed the face of landscape photography in one way or the other. Now, for those that are in the camp of Instagram changed photography in a positive way, usually discuss things like reach. So Instagram has enabled photographers an outlet, a means of content distribution that there has never been before. You know, before Instagram, before social media, a photographer really had to rely on art, exhi you know, art exhibitions, photo galleries, photo contests, driving traffic to their website, which we all know is most certainly not the easiest thing in the world to do. And that was really what they had to rely on to distribute their, their photos into the marketplace. And that was difficult. There was no real quick way to do it. It was definitely a grind and you gotta stick with it for a long time. Then came Instagram, you know, only eight years ago and really changed that. Photographer now has a way to distribute all of their work in a very rapid way to possibly hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people. So it's never been easier because of Instagram and social media to get eyes on a photographer's work, to get eyes on their content. So that's definitely a positive thing. Also sharing like-minded ideas to the masses. And what I mean by that is if you flip through your Instagram feed, it's very easy to get ideas from other landscape photographers or photographers in general. You know, whether it's um, different types of editing techniques, maybe it's exposure blending or different compositional techniques. Maybe it's the forced perspective composition where you have a very predominant um, foreground interest where you're very up close to it. And then you have something very, you know, dramatic in the background. You're able to get a lot of these ideas that are very unique to some photographers and you can possibly try them and implement them into your photography as well. So Instagram has been very good at, you know, sharing a photographer's possibly a unique approach to their art. So sharing like-minded ideas with like-minded folks is, is another positive trait that I hear discussed rather often. And then the possibly the, the, the third, you know, most talked about positive of how Instagram changed photography is sharing the world with the world. And what that means is, you know, there's a lot of locations on this earth that people might not be very aware of. Maybe they'll never have an opportunity to go to these locations. And Instagram has created a channel that is able to share with everybody, you know, the, the, the planet that we call home. And that's, that's a great thing. You know, there's a lot of people that might not be very familiar with Patagonia or the Dolomites or some of the national parks we have in the U.S., whether it's, you know, Yosemite or Joshua Tree or, you know, the, the list goes on and on. So sharing, you know, the world's beauty with the world is, 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 a, is a positive thing as well. Now, on the opposite, opposite side of this coin are those that believe Instagram changed photography in a negative way. Now keep in mind here, be, or keep in mind, pay close attention because this is, this is interesting here. So possibly one of the, the number one negative aspects of this discussion that I hear is that it's difficult to be noticed. And you might think to yourself, well, that was one of the positive things. That was the, one of the problems Instagram solved. But in reality, out of the 95 million photos and videos shared on Instagram every day and that number is only growing. How are you going to get your one photo noticed? How do you get this one photo seen in, a, with, with, in, in the midst of a hundred million? So yes, Instagram has made it easier, but it made it easier for everybody, which can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing because the market is very flooded right now and it's only getting worse. 
So that is definitely a difficult thing, is the problem that it solved a few years ago is now a problem that it's combating against once again. And that's how do you get eyes on your content? Whether it's you know researching specific hashtags or, or trying to, to figure out the Instagram algorithm, whatever it is, it's, it's very difficult to get noticed today. And that's, that's interesting, because that's the problem it originally solved. Also, if you flip through your Instagram feed, you'll, you'll probably see a lot of the same kind of content out there. You know, how many, how many legs do you see hanging out of tents or over cliffs? How many feet are hanging out of helicopters? How many pictures of Iceland with somebody with a, a, a head torch shining up into the night sky or the Milky Way above? Or pictures of Patagonia or the Dolomites or Yosemite, or like I mentioned earlier, Joshua Tree. These are fantastic places and all, I've been to many of them and I want to go to all of them. But it seems like a lot of these places are kind of becoming oversaturated. And a lot of these photos are starting to look, look the same. You know, there's a lot of articles written from park rangers across, um, you know, US national parks and, and people are coming into these national parks and they're paying their fees and they have their phones in hand and they, they don't stop by the welcome center to get maps or learn anything about the park, they are literally going to one specific location to mimic a certain image that's on their phone. These are called, I've heard the, the phrase coined, uh, Instagram hikers. And they're really missing the big show here. They're missing the entire park. They're literally just trying to recreate one particular photo. And they're trying to you, you know, use a particular artist or photographer's you know, unique perspective. So sharing these like-minded ideas is, is a great thing, but it's also kind of these ideas are getting very overrun now. And uh, Instagram is kind of creating this large curated feed that all looks the same. It all looks very similar. So, and a lot of people are thinking it's starting to look very boring. It, it's losing its wow factor, you know, where you see a photo and you're just blown away. You're like, oh my God, how did they create that? I haven't had that moment in years and it makes you wonder, you know, are there any unique ideas out there? Is there anything left in the tank? Now this third um, component here to the negative side of this discussion is, is a powerful one. And it has to do with the places that people are going to recreate a lot of the things they see on Instagram. So one of the benefits of Instagram, it's showing the world the world. And this is also a negative thing too, because a lot of these locations are becoming completely overrun with not just photographers, but tourists alike. And they're going to recreate these photos in places like, you know, Iceland, Joshua Tree, Banff National Park, Yosemite, Mount Hood, the Dolom, the list goes on and on and on. These locations are seeing record turnouts year after year. The, amount, the daily attendance eight years ago in U.S. national parks when Instagram first came out versus the daily attendance today is absolutely off the charts. And it is only getting worse. And what's going to happen is a lot of these footpaths you took to these epic locations where you went there for sunset and you were the only one. Now you go there and you have to get a ticket. You got to wait in line. You're just a number waiting to get in because there's, you know, 300 other photographers or tourists already there. And the footpath down is no longer a footpath, it's a concrete walkway. And there's huge parking lots for people to go to. And that's great. But park rangers across the U.S. specifically are reporting vandalism citations are at an all-time high and the number is increasing every year. And these people are going some of them, not everybody, most of them take good care of it, but a lot of these parks, a lot of these areas are getting trampled. The vegetation's getting destroyed. Some people are vandalizing them. And you're crazy if you don't believe that something's gonna happen where a lot of these locations are gonna have to change the way that we see them. They're gonna start putting up ropes or guidelines of where to walk. Or the worst is they're gonna build observation decks where everybody has to stand on this platform hundreds of yards away to see what we used to be able to see up close and personal. And it will happen, it's already happening. Now my final point here is something that's very personal to me and it's how Instagram has changed the creative process. I was in Hawaii uh, about a month ago uh, to the island of Kauai, which was absolutely breathtaking. And one of the shoots that I had lined up was a sunset shoot. Um, 
in a location on the North Shore of Kauai called Queen's Bath. This is a very, uh, very dangerous area of the North Shore. There's been quite a few people that have been swept out to sea here because of the uh, unpredictable tide that comes in. But it's also just an amazing scene. And I got, I, you know, I was there for sunset. All the conditions were right. I made the long hike down. And, uh, you know, I really had to work for the photo. And the whole experience is something that I'll never forget. I took hundreds of images of this scene to try and get the perfect one with the perfect wave action, with the perfect color hitting the clouds. And I did. I got one that I absolutely love. And I was very excited. You know, I, the, the wave action was perfect. The shutter speed was perfect. You can see the... Uh, the beginning of the Nepali coast in the background, kind of standing guard of the, over the entire scene. It was perfect. Got back to the hotel room. I loaded the photos on the computer. I backed them up. I didn't want to lose any of them. And I was so excited a few days when I left, I got on the plane, I was headed home. I started editing the photo and I got home and I finished the photo and it was perfect. One of my favorite photos of 2018. Everything was perfect for me. And I was so excited the day had finally come to post it on Instagram and I researched the best hashtags and I came up with something real witty to write across it to describe the photo. And I posted it on Instagram. A couple days went by and I checked that heart number and it was nowhere near as high as I had anticipated it would. And I instantly felt like there was something wrong with my photo. Maybe the edit I put on it was wrong. Maybe my composition wasn't as strong as, as I thought it was, or maybe my shutter speed was too fast and I didn't get enough motion blur, but I instantly felt that the photo wasn't as good as I thought it was. And it was just because it didn't get a lot of likes. Now maybe a lot of people didn't see it, or maybe a lot of people just didn't like it, but at the end of the day, that was my photograph that I worked hard for, that I left with a story of an evening that I'll never forget in my life. But because uh, it didn't get a lot of hearts on Instagram, I felt like it wasn't as good as before. And my very final point here is, you know, we're all trying to, we all wanna grow on these social media platforms. We, we post content because we wanna get our names out there. We wanna get eyes on our work. We wanna get the hearts. We wanna get followers. We wanna get the comments and all the engagement. And we're all trying to combat against this algorithm. No one's actually seen said algorithm, but we all know one exists. And we think we know what it wants. We think we want, know it wants consistent content, daily content if you can do it, and engaging content. And it kind of creates pressure to always be creating. And forced creation, it, or forced anything, very rarely ever works. And I know sometimes I've, I've felt a little bit of anxiety because almost a week has gone by and I haven't had anything to post because I've been busy with the rest of my life, my family, and I haven't had an opportunity to get out there and make anything. And I'm afraid that my followers are gonna think I died or I left the platform, I quit Instagram. So I, you know, go back in time and, and find a photo that I posted, you know, a couple years ago and I re-edit it and repost it again. Or I go back in the archives and I find a photo that is really not my favorite, it's definitely not my best work, but I edit it anyway and I post it up. Just post some content to get it out there posting for the sake of posting so i think that's definitely a negative thing that instagram has really changed the mentality a little bit very subtly and some people might have noticed this in themselves and maybe i'm the only one and maybe no one else has noticed this but keep in mind you know pay close attention next time that uh, a situation similar to this arises for you it ultimately comes down to one thing though you know what's instagram worth and I don't mean that from a Wall Street perspective, but what's it worth to me? What's Instagram worth to you? And it's a very personal question. You know, has Instagram changed your photography? Has it changed your photography in a positive way? Has it changed in a negative way? Everyone's answer will probably be different and the way it's impacted you, like I mentioned, is a very personal thing. And only you can answer that. I appreciate you watching this week's video and I'll see you next week. Goodbye. Triple A. Credits are right. Hang up the phone and let your heart break on the inner lane. 24 twice. She's on the phone, but she's staying on with.